Hi, this is a tutorial for the InfoSemantics custom cursor widget for Captivate versions 5 and up. What this widget allows you to do is take the mouse cursor image and replace it with an image of your choosing. So how do you go about doing that? Well, if you're using a version of Captivate below Captivate 6, what you have to do is take your image, animation, or whatever slide object essentially you want to use as your mouse cursor, place it on the same slide as the mouse cursor widget, and then give it a memorable item name. So here I have two images, one's called clippers underscore up, and the other one is called clippers underscore down. I'm going to make both these images appear as my mouse cursor. So I already have a custom cursor widget on stage here, so I'm going to double click it to open up its properties. Now, what you have to do is under the up cursor uh, tab here, click the select cursor image button. This is going to bring up a dialog, and here you can choose to uh, put in the name of the object on the slide that will act as your mouse cursor. So that is clippers underscore up uh, in this case. And I'll press down, and then I'm going to move to the down cursor tab. So this allows me to specify an image that is going to appear as my mouse cursor when I press my mouse cursor down. So I'm going to choose the select cursor image button again, and then I'm going to type in clippers underscore down and then click Done, and then click OK. Now, when I publish the movie by pressing F4, we're going to see that these clippers images are now being used as my mouse cursor. So as I move my mouse around, you can see the image follows it, and when I press my mouse cursor down, the clippers underscore down image appears as my mouse cursor. Now, we already have one problem with this uh, interaction, and that is when I roll over this button here and click, you can see it's not working. Now, that's because we expect that the mouse cursor point, the single pixel that actually acts as the mouse cursor, is going to be placed somewhere in the middle of the jaws of these clippers. Whereas, in actual fact, by default, the widget puts the mouse cursor point in the top left corner of the widget. So if I roll the top left corner of the uh, image of the mouse cursor here over the button, we can see, yep, yeah, that's where the mouse is actually positioned, not in the middle of those jaws. So let's go back to the custom cursor widget and let's offset the mouse cursor point according to the image. So down here, you can see that we've got a pointer section here and I can change the pointer X and pointer Y. I'm going to put in 28 for pointer X and 32 for pointer Y. Then I'm going to go to the down cursor image and do the same there, 28 X, 32 Y click done and OK. And what that's going to do is offset the mouse cursor point 28 pixels from the left of the image and 32 pixels from the top of the image, which will place it more or less within those jaws. So I press F4 again to preview my movie. And in the output you see when I roll over the uh, the button there, yep, it's the mouse cursor is placed in the middle of those jaws. Now, for Captivate 6, you have another option for choosing an image, and I'm going to jump over to another example to show you this. Here I have a doorknob image acting as my background, and I'm going to open up my custom cursor widget, go into the Select Up Cursor dialog, and choose From Library instead of From Stage. Now, this allows me to click the Browse for Image button which opens up a dialog where I can choose an image from the library or click the import button to browse for an image on the file system. I'm going to choose the open hand image, click OK, and that's going to bring that image into this widget. Now I can set up my pointer X and pointer Y position by double clicking on the image where I want it to be. And I want it to be in the middle of my middle finger here and click done. Now. Whenever you're using the custom cursor widget, you must always set up an up cursor. However, the down cursor is optional. In this case, I don't want to use a down cursor, so I'm going to click OK, allow the widget to update, press F4 to preview the movie, and there in the output, we can see that when I'm moving my mouse cursor, it's loaded that image from the library, and I'm able to use that on stage. So what I'd like to do in this interaction is that when my mouse cursor goes over the top of this doorknob, that I'm able to press my mouse cursor down and have my hand look like it's grabbing onto the door handle here. However, if I'm not over the top of the doorknob, I don't want to see that grab hand appear. Well, here's how we can do that. I'm going to copy this widget here uh, so that I get a second one. 
and I'm going to double click it to open up the widget properties. I'm going to go to the down cursor section and I'm going to select my down cursor image from the library, which is this grab hand image. And once again, I'll double click on the image to set the registration point in the middle of the uh, middle finger there. Now, as you can see on stage here, I already have a click box set up over the top of the doorknob. That click box has a name of door underscore hit. Now underneath the up cursor and down cursor tabs, we have a section here for hit areas. If I check that and put in the name of that click box there, door underscore hit, what's going to happen is that this mouse cursor set, the up cursor and the down cursor are only going to appear if I am over the top of the doorknob. So I'll click OK to that, allow that to update, press F4. And then when I'm, uh, when I'm not over the top of the doorknob, you see it when I put my mouse down, that other image is not appearing. But when it is over the top of the doorknob and I press down, yep, that's where my uh, down cursor is appearing. So another cool thing that you can do if you've got Captivate 6 is that you can check the play sound uh, section. So if I'm going to go to the down cursor part, check play, uh, play a sound. I'm going to browse through my library for a sound that I want to play when this down hand appears. Now because it's supposed to be grabbing the door handle here, I want to make it a sound like a door handle a turning. So I'm going to check this door handle open mp3, click OK and I'll press the play button. I don't know if you can hear that because of the recording software, but there is the sound of the door handle opening there. And I'll click OK, and if I publish the movie, let me just unplug my um, headphones, and you should be able to hear it through my speakers, through my microphone. And when I click there, yeah, there you can hear the uh, sound of the door handle opening. Now, one other cool thing that comes with this widget is something called at syntax. What is that? Well, let's say that I have multiple hit areas on the stage here. So I've got this highlight box here and I'll add another one for good measure. And when the mouse cursor rolls over the highlight box, I want it to have the same mouse cursor appear as when I'm rolling over this door underscore hit. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select the highlight boxes and I'm going to put underscore hit on the end of their name, the same as with the click box over here. So all the areas I want to act as targets have underscore hit on the end of their name. Then I'm going to double click into the widget properties. And what I could do is I could put in a comma here and put in highlight box uh, and the name of the highlight box there, but that's quite labor intensive. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to get rid of door here and replace it with an at symbol. What this means is that the widget is uh, going to go through the stage and it's any object that has underscore hit on the end of this name is going to act as a hit area for this widget. So I'm going to save that, press F4 to preview the movie. And now in the output, we can see that when my mouse cursor is over one of these hit areas and I press down, yeah, I'm getting that down cursor and for both of them, but when it's not over those hit areas, then the down cursor does not appear. Okay, now this, you can also use at syntax for cursors as well. So if I go back to my first example here, and on, I have a number of slides in this project. So the second slide here has some gavels uh, set up to be uh, mouse cursors. But let's try and be a bit fancy here. What if I just wanted to use one custom cursor widget throughout this whole movie? Well, I could do that. What I could do is I could um, go to this slide, I'm gonna cut the widget off there, and I'm going to place it on the first slide of this movie. And then if I scroll down in the timing section, I'm going to set this timing to be rest of project. So that means if I scroll down here, you can see, yep, this widget is appearing throughout the rest of the movie. Now, if I go into my widget, and I go into the select cursor image section and I replace clippers with an at symbol and press done. And then I go into the uh, down section and place clippers with that symbol there. That means that this widget is going to uh, grab any object with underscore up at its, 
at the end of its item name as the up cursor for the widget and any object with underscore down in its name to be the down cursor of the widget. So we already know clippers underscore up is going to work, but if I go down here, we can see that I've got for my images of a gavel here, I've already have um, these syntaxes on the end set up. Now, if I publish my movie, this is not going to work right out of the box. And that's because on this first slide here, I haven't got any cursors set up to work. So I'm getting an error message here saying it can't find any cursors to work with. We can get around this by going back into the widget and deselecting debug mode down the bottom here under the miscellaneous section. If I deselect that and then preview the movie again, what this means is that the widget is not going to worry if it can't find any cursors to work with. It's just going to allow the movie to keep on playing and when those cursors appear, then it's going to use them. In this example here, I've moved to the next slide and the widget is picking up my clippers cursors. And if I move to the slide after that, I'm able to use the gavel just there. Okay, now before I close out, I'm going to explain the last setting here and that is smooth playback. The reason that this setting exists is because the Captivate movie generally plays back at 30 frames per second. However, the system mouse cursor plays back at a much higher frame rate than that. So if I have smooth playback checked, the widget is going to try its best to get the mouse cursor image to keep with the same frame rate frame rate as the moving mouse. However, this may interrupt some animations playing back on slides. So if you find yourself having issues with that, that sort of behavior, then you can just turn off smooth playback. The mouse cursor won't, it will be look a bit more jagged as it follows the uh, system cursor, but it'll all work the same. So that is how you use the custom cursor widget for Captivate versions five and up.